And away we go. It's another edition of the Arrowhead Pride Editor Show. My name is Pete Sweeney. I'm the editor-in-chief of ArrowheadPride.com, joined once again by my esteemed executive editor, John Dixon. And right, right off the top, how great is this? We get our podcast producer, Steve uh, Serta. This is all coming after the Chiefs have won their second straight AFC championship, 17-10 over the Baltimore Ravens. We'll get to John in a second. I usually throw it to John first, but Steve, I just saw that Justin Reed dropped these (laughs) in Spags We Trust t-shirts, and you you had told me this morning that you had notifications on for Justin Reed. Did you secure a t-shirt? That's the main question we have. I I saw that he sent out the link, and I was actually just telling John I was was ready to roll. I was was ready to immediately make that charge to my credit card, and... They're a little pricey. They're, it's for a good cause, and it's going to just the Reeds Foundation. What are they I just, going uh, for? I, I it's it's sixty five dollars before shipping 65 and handling. Sixty five dollars. Yeah, so that is high talking, for sure. Yeah, after taxes and shipping, I, I'm assuming that's a seventy five dollar t shirt, and I, I'm not really willing to commit that. Even though that's I do pretty really pricey. T shirts. I'm. I wonder. Like what is what's the quality of T-shirt that they're offering here? It better, better be spectacular. Be <laughs> Jeez, I I that's a you know what it is. It's a novelty item. The the price point is a lot. I'm sure they're making it that price point. Uh, a because it's going to be a rarity, and and B I I don't think they're trying to make <laughs> so many of these T-shirts that they got to send them all out. But uh, what they've created, I believe, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Steve is These are the uh, Inspags We Trust t-shirts that you saw in the locker room uh, ahead and before the game, pre-game and after the game. And uh, Justin Reed uh, has some sort of hookup. I'm clicking on it right now. Uh, They look pretty good. Uh, It it is a no excuse excuse shop, and a a portion of the proceeds will uh, benefit the J. Reed Indeed uh, program, which is his charity. And uh, it supports the local communities. Uh, and it says through tangible difference making actions. But uh, if you want to be the best dressed Chiefs fan at your Super Bowl party, <laughs> get ready to 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 spend a, a little little bit on on this uh, novelty item. But it is a best, very cool shirt. Best dressed but poorest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, yeah. I really, really want one because I love Steve Spagnolo. He is hands down most fun and interesting coach to talk to on the Kansas City Chiefs. But mm, I'll go pricey. along with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh it it'll, you know, cost you a pretty penny, but you'll be the coolest person at your Super Bowl party. Maybe you don't have to bring an hors d'oeuvre then. If you go and buy this <laughs> shirt, <laughs> you can just enjoy what everyone else uh brought. Anyway, it's a it was a big night. I just got back from Baltimore a few hours ago. Decided to take the earliest possible flight out of there, which is always a nightmare when you're doing it. But then you end up back in wherever you're you're from, and you know, this happens to be uh, KC, and you're I think a lot happier when you do it. But um, man, it was cool to see. You know, speaking of Steve Spagnolo, just how um, much the players appreciate and love him in the locker room. I put out this video on on X of them all flexing together after what was a just an outstanding defensive performance and the chiefs needed it. They looked very good. I thought offensively in the first half, I know we're going to get into some of our thoughts in the game and then couldn't score uh, anymore. And so, you know, at a certain point it looked like that they were just going to have these 17 points and it was whether or not the defense could hold the Ravens who have been one of the best offensive teams running over great teams in the NFL all year long. They're in their building and in spags, we trust the Chiefs shut it down for the 17 10 win we're going to get into our marinated takeaways different type of show today uh because i think we're all reeling from the game a little bit i was in travel with we're not doing a full show abbreviated show but we'll uh, share our our marinated takeaways but first we have uh, some reviews here guys uh first from colin excellent show has been a listener for years now love each show uh, and listen to the rapid reactions immediately after each game well done to pete and company well thank you It's more Steve and company. Steve does this podcast area of it. So to be fair, Um, this uh, this guy's uh, Apple iTunes name is nickname. 
and a lot of numbers that I'm not going to have to read off here. <laughs> but uh, best chief show by far. Thank you, because there's a million of them now. I don't even I don't even know how yeah. many there are. Uh, tune into the Great British Chief Show for the best depth uh, analysis available. Sometimes I wish they'd take themselves a little less seriously <laughs> and have a little humor. Uh, th is that a joke in itself? It has to be. These guys are the, the funniest guys we have. Um, the editor show with editor in chief Pete Sweeney and executive editor uh, John Dixon is easily the funniest show, though it may be uh, missed by some because of the subdued and dry humor style they have. Stephen and Rocky give great live reactions in the rapid reaction show. Show and BK do a fantastic. A show helping us find imposter and fraudulent narratives out of structure. Uh, great tidbits. Um, coast to coast shows uh, just show how big the kingdom is. Honestly, every show is great listening. and You all make every season more enjoyable. Thanks for all the entertainment and analysis. Uh, go Chiefs. That's one of the best reviews we ever got. Everyone got a little That's, shout yeah. out. Nice. Personalization there. So thank you to nickname and all those numbers for a uh, great review. If you leave us a rating and review on apple itunes we will read it here on the editor show uh, you can actually say a statement or a question and we'll try to discuss it uh, we always appreciate the reviews helps us reach more of the chiefs uh, fans across the globe steve since i have you on here and we're going to get into marinated takeaways here in a second but spotify now has ratings uh right can you leave a review on spotify what's the deal with spotify I think so. Um, I can only okay. see that we have ratings now on Spotify because I don't have a Spotify account. So if you want to leave us a review and okay. also share your Spotify uh, review, that would be great. Um, got to got to get somebody who's got a Spotify account because I do not have one. I'm an Apple Music guy. You could also email me like if you just have Spotify and that's how you use it and you want us to read a review in the show. Pete.Sweeney at SB Nation. Uh, I get a lot of emails, so I will try to make sure I see it. But if you are in a pickle and you really want us to read a review, you could try that. Uh, make the make the subject um, AP Podcast Network review, and I will make sure to put it in a separate category. All right, enough. Uh, we have to talk about this game, a 17-10 win over the Baltimore Ravens, who I think a lot of people felt would march their way to the Super Bowl, especially after they were able to get that number one seed, the home field advantage. Didn't ultimately matter yesterday. So, John, uh, take it away. You are are usually the person who gives us the first uh, takeaway. What did you What you like about this game? Well, you know what struck me about the game was that hardly anybody who spoke about the game uh, was wrong about it. Uh, you know, there were people mm -hmm. who picked the Chiefs. There were people who picked the Ravens. But even the people who picked the Chiefs, including uh, you and me, <laughs> Pete, actually all three of us picked the Ravens and our uh, picks on ArrowheadPride.com. But we all acknowledged that this was going to be a close game that the Ravens mm -hmm. could easily win. And, you know, we didn't see anything in on Sunday that, that defied that description. The, the Ravens could easily have scored two touchdowns that the Chiefs took away from them. They could have won this game. The Chiefs could have won the game by a lot more, but the Ravens' defense was really good. I mean, it was it was a battle for the ages, I thought. I, th I thought going into this game that it could end up being one of the Chiefs' most memorable victories or losses, for that matter, uh, in in franchise history, just because of the run up to it. You know that they yeah. that they had been so under expectations all season, and then won a couple of road games to get there. If they were able to win it, I thought, well, man, this is going to be an amazing narrative, and and it lived up to all of that. It was just it was incredible to watch. Yeah, uh, and I, I thought it, it was interesting how the game played out because this is another one of these games where you first think that it's going to be this back-and-forth offensive game. I know the Chiefs had found themselves a little bit offensively in the previous week, and you know what the Ravens had done. They were coming off a 34-10 to 10 win over the Houston Texans, who I thought looked pretty good in that early round. And, and mm -hmm. so yeah, um, I thought that was very impressive, and I you know, wasn't ruling out a shootout. Uh, I tended to think the defenses would step up. I I think I had 24 23 on this game in favor of the Chiefs, uh, which was a little bit more of the, the points uh, than it ended up being just because the defenses were so good in uh, that second half. But I, I agree with you, John. I think it just was so entertaining to watch. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of people are unhappy with the two Super Bowl teams, given uh, that it is a rematch from a couple of years ago, uh, the Chiefs' uh, first run there to the Super Bowl. Uh, but just as far as uh, an entertainment standpoint, um, you know, if you're not a fan of either team, I just thought it was 
uh, one that was very compelling toward the end. You had the offense early, really good defensive play in the middle, and then um, you know you got some points finally in the fourth quarter, but by then it was too little too late, which is how well the defenses were playing. Steve, uh, what was your uh, initial takeaway from this game? I just want will forever uh, fondly remember this chief season and and really it's it, my love for it has really grown because midseason mm-hmm. I, I would have told you the offense was a disaster and it was the most frustrating chiefs team uh, to watch since like the not Alex to, Smith not, days. not to gloat here, but I wouldn't have told you that I was one of the only folks. <laughs> In this damn media core that said, <laughs> I think they have enough. And that you look, yeah, we don't know if they're and, gonna win this but, but we'll see. Yes, I'm sorry, sorry to cut you amazing. off, Steve. I just had to get that out of my system. But <laughs> you go ahead. The, the yeah. uh the well, spotlight is back on you. But the the things that we were pointing out all season long are, are still true about this Chiefs yeah. team. Mm-hmm, but then sure. when we were pointing to the things like well, this is what they have to lean into, this is what they have they have to adjust to try to go make a run. Well, they did all those things. They did. They they started leaning on Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice and Isaiah Pacheco because the rest of the offense just doesn't have it. And they committed to that. And they they cut down on the turnovers and they leaned into their Super Bowl caliber defense. And that's why this is going to be one of my favorite chief seasons of all time, no, no matter how it ends, because. I love defense in the modern day NFL, and it's so difficult to play defense because of the rules and because there's so many excellent players on the offensive side of the ball. And I don't know if this Chiefs defense is ever going to be as talented and as special as they are this season. Like they need to be uh, identified as the the defense that they are. And I'm hoping in the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, they'll finally get the credit because last week it was all just Baltimore's a defense like we haven't yeah. seen it in ages and it was totally overlooking the chiefs defense as if there was this huge gap that just simply didn't exist. And so hopefully they finally get their credit now because I'm going to remember this defense for a very long time. Yeah. I, I, I think you make a great point and not even really comparing defenses that are, that are in the league to each other. I, I think you're right. Like playing defense just nowadays in general is a, very difficult thing to do and the chiefs are playing at a very high level and like against the best teams so even when you know you see this 49ers matchup come up like as far as the skill position players on this team it's like you got debo and cmc and you have george kittle and brandon Ayuk, and you're like well what are the but but again Spags like figures it out he comes up with this plan where these teams that seem so good offensively just suddenly they're curbed uh, to an extent, and uh, this will be the most difficult challenge yet. But uh, keep in mind that you know I know the transitive property isn't isn't exact in the NFL, but the Ravens beat the 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 piss out of the San Francisco uh, 49ers, and so um, you know I I think you you probably feel good when you think about it, and in that term, even though it's like again it's not it's not an exact science when you're talking about the NFL rock paper scissors situation it doesn't really work like that. Uh, I want to uh, uh, give my initial takeaway here. I just think it, I think you're right about the season being special. And we talked a little bit about this on the report um, yesterday that we did after the game, Steve, and how wrong we were assuming that Dan Campbell <laughs> would hold on to the lead. If you go back to the report, <laughs> we're just like, yeah, it's, it's pretty much going to be Chiefs Lions. And, you know, lo and behold, after we were done, we saw the 49ers score on like four straight possessions. Um, but what I, I think is really special about this year is a the adversity, but b like what uh, came from the adversity, and that was having to play on the road. And you know, you look at this road that the Chiefs have had in the playoffs. You can make a case that it's been the worst offensive team, offensive scheme, and plan that Mahomes has had to deal with against the toughest playoff road that we've seen him face. You have the Miami Dolphins in the extreme weather, and they managed to win that game. Another high-powered offense with a lot of good weapons. They score seven points in that game. And granted, I think of the three that they've played so far, you felt the best about that one because even though with the weather stuff, they were at home and they had beaten the Miami Dolphins earlier in the year. But still, you know, you never know. I, I think the Dolphins were good enough where you, you can make a case that it could have been a good game. Uh, against the Buffalo Bills and the Ravens. Now, these are two back-to-back games where the home team had to win the game. It was like a franchise-defining 
era mm, yeah. game for the whereas Kansas City, if they would have lost one of these games, sure, it would have been disappointing, but it wouldn't have been like, okay, this is franchise defining and, and saying, well, you know, Pat is never gonna win one. He's already won two. So sure, would have been disappointing, yes. But like it wasn't a scenario where the Chiefs had come up short so many years in a row and now that was their time. This was two times in a row. It was the time for Josh Allen in his building. Bill's playing well, you know, since their bye week. Can't get it done against the Chiefs. And not all that was Josh Allen's, Allen's fault. The rest of the team um, failed in a lot of ways. Stefan Diggs, who talks a lot, dropped this wide open pass. We, of course, have wide right part two 30 years later. But then you know, you're in <laughs> now you're in Baltimore yesterday and just being there. I mean, it was a palpable feeling that Ravens fans were walking in there thinking this is our, this is our game. This is our year. There's no way we get out of this game with a loss. And like, lo and behold, like the Chiefs still remain uh, inevitable. And uh, for as, as as good as the Ravens defense played, you ended up holding the Chiefs to 17. I think if you're any kind of Baltimore fan going into that game, you take that 10 out of 10 times and say, our offense has been fantastic this year. But it's just the Chiefs defense was better and like historically good. And what you have is two franchises that are gravely disappointed and it's the parallel of Michael Jordan. Like I think about Carl Malone and Patrick Ewing and uh, Reggie Miller and Allen Iverson and all these players who'd never won a title because of Michael Jordan. You're going to so start to see that stack up. I mean, it's going to be rare that Mahomes is going to allow you through. And Ron uh, pointed this out on, on X and that this was a point I was making last week. This was the year to do it. The, the AFC missed out on a grand opportunity. The Chiefs were vulnerable. The The Bills game could have went either way. The Ravens game came down to one single score, and the Ravens made some mistakes in this game, caused by the Chiefs' defense, but they made mistakes in this game and let this opportunity go away. So I just, what a time to be a Chiefs fan. Like in a down year, you still prevented all these AFC teams from doing anything, um, and I think they're going to be better uh, next year. All right, John. I rambled a lot. Let's go back to you. <laughs> well, I'm reminded of uh, a couple of things. One of them being uh, the 2015 season where the Chiefs started one and five and yeah. then won like 10 in a row uh, before losing in the divisional round of the New England Patriots. And that included that incredible 30 to nothing victory over the Houston Texans. So which good. Was the Nile Davis. Yeah which was the first playoff game the Chiefs had won in 22 seasons or or whatever it was. I uh, I loved I I love thinking about that game and I just mentioned Niall Davis and I love that you can say that Niall Davis had the game winning touchdown on the first play. Like how, <laughs> how often can you say that? Anyway, yeah. go ahead, sorry. Yeah, uh, and and I think going back to what Steve was saying about this being his favorite season, that's one of my favorite seasons uh for the Chiefs. You know, mm -hmm. it didn't end with a championship. But they showed so much that season. And, you know, they were without Jamal Charles, um, right. who had been injured in, I think, the game against the Bears, I think, which was in week five, if I remember. Well, I'm, I'm looking. I've got a cheat sheet in front of me, but I, it doesn't tell me when Jamal Charles was injured. But he had been lost for the season. And at that point, without J Jamal Charles, the Chiefs, you know, they were built around him. And it wasn't unreasonable to think that they would have a terrible season, but they turned it around and just were fantastic. And I think that's the lesson that I kept reminding myself about as the season went on. I just was not willing to say the Chiefs can't turn this around because of that season, because of yeah. how far behind the eight ball they were, uh, you know, in, in week six at one and five for crying out loud. And, mm -hmm. and then make the playoffs and win a playoff game for the first time in decades. I, you know, you can't ever count the Chiefs under Andy Reid out. And I think that's a, a, a quality that he has that other head coaches don't have, is the ability to, to get a team over that kind of a hump. And now we've got two great examples of it. Yeah, I... Uh... I remember this distinctly about that year. I was still working for dot com. This is one of my first years covering the Chiefs. And uh and they were one and five. And don't forget the Royals were the talk of the town. I mean, if you, this oh, yeah. isn't that long, this isn't all that long ago. And I remember I was standing there with some of the dot com staff. There were a couple TV producers, and it was Therese and maybe one other writer might have been Vahe or Blair, you know, star guys, maybe. Dave, but there was about three writers 
at the press conference. Like nobody was covering the Chiefs. They were dead. They weren't going to make the playoffs. The Royals were the hottest thing. All the media was across the parking lot. Like the only people that were really there were the people that are assigned to cover just the Chiefs. <laughs> and you were right. Like it it came out of nowhere. I remember that um they really leaned into the white on white with the red socks, which is my favorite Chiefs uniform combination that year. And they just kept on wearing them and wearing them. And they had to win every game. The playoffs basically started in week six. Uh, that was a really fun season to bring up. And, and that is a good reason to remember. Like uh, Andy Reid keeps these guys at least positive enough to spark a turnaround where I think in a lot of NFL cities, you get in such a hole where it, it just doesn't seem like a comeback is, is, is possible. And here the Chiefs come back. I mean, they a lot of people wrote them off, uh, especially after that Christmas Day loss. That was just a month ago. Uh, and now they'll be playing in another uh, Super Bowl. All right, Steve, on to you. I This is kind of focused on, I guess it's on the team overall. It's not really just a, a defensive thing. But I, I think something that we talked about a lot, or I did, and something that we talked about on last week's episode of Show MBK a lot is the blue chip players that were going into this AFC championship game. And for some reason, a lot of the conversation again was around the Baltimore Ravens and all of the stars they had. And like, I I don't know if it's this season, if it's strictly because of Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and the shadow that they kind of cast, which I totally understand because they're all world generational kinds of players or if it's, you know, Taylor Swift and the attention and all of that stuff and, and the Chiefs kind of making this ascension to where they, they all of a sudden became even more popular, like they weren't already the best team in all of, all of football. But the, the attention that it took away from some of the Chiefs talent on, on this roster is, is crazy because a lot of the conversation was around how Baltimore's got this other world defense and Lamar's the MVP and they've got all these stars on that side of the ball. And it's like. Everybody forgot about Legereus Sneed, who has been criminally overlooked this season for whatever reason, despite the fact that he's put together one of the best cornerback seasons that we've seen in a long time. Didn't allow a touchdown until the postseason, and it took an insane throw from Josh Allen. Trent McDuffie is a second-year superstar player. The Chiefs secondary has a chance, even going into next year, depending on what happens with Sneed, to be the absolute best secondary in the NFL. It already was this season. And then you you talk about Chris Jones and everything that he's done in this postseason, whether it's contract incentives or, or whatever. And then and then the Chiefs offensive line. And, and then you talk about Mahomes and Kelsey. George Karloftis has been incredible this postseason. Like the, the Chiefs blue chip players and their depth is the best in the NFL. And I know we'll have plenty of time to talk about the Super Bowl and all of the conversation, I think, uh, ahead of that game is going to be the 49ers superstar players because their their blue chip players can go toe to toe with anybody in the league and they got some of the most impressive playmakers in all of the NFL but they don't have the depth that the Chiefs do across mm-hmm. the board and i think yeah. that's been the most important thing for them this season so i just want to acknowledge all of the Chiefs stars and, and the the roster that they built this <clears throat> season is really something special and something we're going to look back on in a few years and be like how the hell did they have all of those guys on that team at one point yeah, you mentioned Legereus Sneed. That play and that sequence with Zay Flowers, where Flowers like shoves him down, and then the quarter changes, and now they're going the other way. It, like I could hear NFL films in my brain as I'm like watching it, because <laughs> it was such a NFL film sequence where you can hear the narrator say, "and, and you know, shoved him to the ground, off, you know, offered a penalty," and then. <laughs> And then it all comes back around, you know, and then you hear the bells and stuff like that. And Sneak comes down with this hammer to yeah. knock the ball away. <laughs> and it changes the complexion of the game. It felt like at that stage, uh, Zay, poor Zay, rookie Zay. I, I like Zay Flowers. He's just an inexperienced rookie who made a dumb mistake. But, uh, man, uh, that was a complete momentum reversal. Like, if he doesn't take that silly 15-yard penalty, I mean, I know they got back there. Um, you know, who knows how it goes. And then they still had an opportunity it looked like it was going to be this walk-in type of touchdown and Snead again I mean it it it's crazy that he's not an all-pro because he's like one of the best players in the NFL <laughs> I, I don't know how the Chiefs are going to afford him I really don't I I feel like if this guy hits the open market like it makes you start to think would they just if Chris Jones is going to be let go anyway would they just let Chris go do it and hold on to Snead and is he going to be more affordable as the franchise tech i mean i don't know there it opens up a lot of questions but you're right he's just so good um 
I wanted to bring up the depth players of this game. Uh, Nick Allegretti. Great. You know, you talked about the offensive line. Uh, we thought that this would be a significant loss and, uh, you know, nothing to take away from Joe Tooney, but Nick Allegretti did a nice job. You uh, see that performance and you, and it makes you think like, should Allegretti be asking for a trade? He probably should be playing offensive line somewhere, right? Like I, you know, maybe he can't uh, be on the chiefs and um, you know, I, it seems like John, right? Like he might with the reports, he might end up playing in the Super Bowl anyway, but uh, a really just nice performance by uh, Allegretti. And then uh, Matt McMullen brought my attention to this uh, with .com. He tweeted out that uh, Deion Bush had three defensive plays and one of them, I mean, he comes off the bench cold. I know he's playing teams, but he comes off the bench cold and is able to make, you know, a game changing mm -hmm. interception. So yeah. you're right. It was the depth. And then this was my point that I was just responding to Steve. And this is my other point. I think in a way, like we, even in Kansas city forgot how good Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey can be together. And I think where, where the, the key is in that is week 18, Andy Reid has referenced that a number of times where how important that was for Kelsey. And I think what gives you boosted confidence is, well, he played really, really well and really his best ball of the year after he got the time off to, to reboot and repair and, you know, feel better and rejuvenate uh, really great three games. We know about the, the rice record that he breaks, but what's key here is the Super Bowl is not next week. He gets another opportunity to have 14 mm -hmm. days off his legs and like i said i mean i know we're going to be talking about the 49ers uh, weapons and how this is going to be the unstoppable force versus the uh immovable uh object to an extent shout out uh hulk hogan um and uh andre the giant <laughs> of course but uh i just find that gives you a lot of confidence like if mahomes and kelsey are the vintage version of mahomes and kelsey as they usually show uh in the postseason and this um you know slow uh, um, caught in the mud, the trudging that maybe we saw from Kelsey in the mid in, in the middle of the year was just a little bit of wear and tear and uh, age, you know, whatever. But now you get a fresh Kelsey again because you get another 14 days off. That to me is just such a grand equalizer. And I think it's why you saw already, John, uh, and, and you covered this for us, the initial spread uh, was two and a half or three, and it's already down to one uh, the last time mm -hmm. I looked at it. And so yeah. um, people were jumping on the Chiefs with, with the points. And so this is going to be a, a close uh, close Super Bowl, I think, and a, and a pretty good matchup. Well, uh, both of you have been talking about the depth of the team. And, and you know, I, I brought it, uh, was saying that the Chiefs 2015 season was great because uh, Reed was able to bring them back from the abyss. But that's about depth, too. You know, in 2015, we were talking about a, a team that was without its single offensive weapon. I mean, Jamal Charles was about it. And so they had to have somebody else be the running back and carry them through that winning streak. Uh, Niall Davis was not somebody that anybody was going to write home about, but he was one of the guys that did that. And I think we see this consistently. I see a lot of people arguing about whether John Dorsey or Brett Veach is the better general manager. And the argument is always that Dorsey is the one that brought the real stars to the team, and Brett Re Veach has never really hit on a draft pick. Well, you know what? Maybe it's more important to hit on those fifth and sixth round players who provide quality depth on a team so when your star gets hurt, you can still play and be an effective team in the NFL. And that may be the reason that we are sitting here today. As Good opposed point. to, you know, as opposed yeah. to because we have the greatest player that ever was that we picked up in the first round or, or however you want to make that argument. Yeah. And I think there's more to be said about just Mahomes and the legacy that has, he's building. If he's able to get this one, I mean, he is well on his way just with how young he is to actually having a reasonable chance at seven, which is what he would need to do, I think, for to be in that conversation for the greatest player of all time. And he is young, and so we'll see if, if he's able to do that. We're through with marinated takeaways for this game. Again, more on this game and next game as we go. The podcast channel is going to be loaded up. I know Sert is on that. Before we go, we have some breaking news here, and very, very unfortunate breaking news. Uh, Chiefs pass rusher Charles Amini, who's been confirmed to suffer a torn ACL oh. uh, against the Ravens. So uh, we'll have to write that up uh, as soon as we get done with this uh, podcast. But – uh, that is a, a big blow. Um, you know, I, I, I think when you consider John uh, the last six or seven weeks of the season, I mean, he, of course, had the suspension 
and then uh, it seemed like it maybe took him a few games to get into football shape to get his feet mm-hmm. under him. Yeah. And he was playing some good ball. And um, that play against Jackson, you know, it, it, it's tough to sack Jackson, let alone get him to fumble the football. And right. just unstoppable uh, on that play uh, yesterday. But what it leads to is the the end of the season. And many who's got to be feeling it today. I talked to him in the locker room yesterday, and this might, must not have been like one of these all of a sudden you can't put all your weight on it. Cause he told me he, he thinks he should be fine, but I guess the MRI revealed that, um, you know, not to be, oh, and he doesn't get man. to play his old team here. Um, your reaction, John. Oh, well, I, I mean, I, I think I said it when you, <laughs> when you told me what you just discovered, uh, I think that's my reaction right there. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's, this is a bad thing, but again, this is why we, should continue to believe in the chiefs is that they will figure out some way to persevere without everybody. I remind you, you know, I was bringing up the 2015 season. What about the 2020 season? They went into the postseason with four different guys on the offensive line. And it wasn't until they got to the fifth guy who wasn't the normal starter that things went South. That should tell you a lot about the kind of depth that the chiefs have on these teams and that's why, although it's upsetting, of course, for Omenihu not to get to ch- not to get a chance to play in the Super Bowl against his former team. I mean, I'm sure that's what was motivating him to say those things to you, Pete, in the locker room. Yeah. But um, you know, this is what they do. They say next man up, and they mean it, and they make it work. It's a shame because this was such a good signing, and it's happening too. Uh, late January, it's the January 29th, as we're recording this. Uh, so you imagine he'll have the surgery in the upcoming days. And so, you know, you're looking at a timetable that's going to put training camp in question as well. So that's a right mm-hmm. a double blow. Uh, sir, do you got anything on this? Yeah, I mean, it really sucks because I think Charles Amena, who's another one of those players who has kind of been overlooked. But since he came back from his suspension, he's been a tremendous player for the Chiefs this season. He's, he had yes, been he really is. impactful yeah. in the postseason. Um But I, I mean, I will say as far as that position group goes, they've got some of the most depth there uh, of any group on the roster. Uh, you know, Malik Herring's had some, some reps this week, this season. Uh, Mike Dan is obviously going to have to step up and have a huge impact. Maybe we'll see Felix and DK Uzama actually get right. activated mm-hmm. for the Super yeah. Bowl. Um, so that they've got depth there. I also think Leo Chanel is a guy that they like to use in pass rush situations occasionally. So he, he could be a guy who could step in and maybe win some reps there. Um, you know, it really sucks because I think it, it's certainly a blow to the team and, and a player that had been an amazing free agent signing. But, you know, it, it, I think the, the biggest thing for him is, yeah, it's his training camp in jeopardy. Is is his future going to be put on hold now with the Chiefs? Because that's going to be something that's going to take him a while to come back from. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any question that NUDK is going to be back on the the on the day, game day roster because that's what they did when Omanahu was out. You know, he got he got to play in the first six weeks of the season because they didn't have Omenahu. And now that he's gone, I, there's no question in my mind that he's going to be active for these games and he may get some time on the field. So this will be very interesting to see. Yeah, uh, it was a two year contract for um, Omenahu. And so he actually becomes a, a free agent in 25. I mean, I imagine. He'll be able to return in the first quarter of uh, 2024, and he'll be ultra motivated. But it, you know, may take him till the second half of next season to really, you know, with these injuries. Sometimes it takes a while to get your feet back on there. Just a tough, tough situation uh, for Kansas City. And uh, what sucks for Menahue as well is he's a former 49er. You're not going to get another chance to play a former team in the Super Bowl, right? Like the chances of that are so slim. So uh, a true shame uh, to someone who really came on at the end. Uh, of of the year uh, i want to outline before we go I know that we shared our thoughts and just talked through some of this breaking news um before we go uh this is the scenario for the week the chiefs uh will actually they're meeting uh as we speak today on on monday going through some team meetings andy reed's going to give them a couple days off which is good reset the mind get get uh get back in the the, the swing of things and and um come back fresh uh, first practice this week will be Thursday. The Chiefs, what they actually like to do, and I like this about um, how they operate in, you know, for the Super Bowl, they give the players a day off so they can celebrate, do whatever. 
when they come back for Thursday, Friday, Saturday practices, they're basically preparing as if the Andy Reid schedule, as if the game was on Monday. And so they're really installing the whole game plan here in Kansas City. And then why, why Andy does that is because they can focus a little bit better in Kansas City. You get to Vegas or wherever the Super Bowl is this year, it's in Vegas, and there are just so many uh, distractions. And so rather than uh, giving the players a week off and teaching it for the first time, they get a, a run through a review. Uh, when they get to Vegas at some of these close practices. And um, that makes it uh, a little bit easier. And hey, uh, it's worked for the big man um, two out of these three times. And uh, that's a 66% uh, success rate. So why not go uh, with that strategy once again? But we'll have from the podium. We actually have Andy Reid up from today. Uh, if you want to go back and listen to that, I know we didn't play any cuts. Uh, some good stuff today. Our next media availability will be Thursday, Friday. And then we'll shut down until we get to Tuesday and and uh, so on and so forth. Steve, any uh, thing to add on the podcast uh, channel before we shut this down? No, full lineup of shows this week and next week. So we'll have plenty of content for you. Working on some guests and, and stuff and maybe some Super Bowl week things. So hopefully we got some good stuff for you guys. All right. That's the voice of Steve Serta. Thank you to him. Thank you to our executive editor, John Dixon, for chipping in on this uh, abbreviated version of the editor show congrats to kansas city uh, another really 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 great season with one game to play your chiefs are the afc champions if you like the show be sure to leave a rating and a review on apple itunes and or spotify we don't really know if, uh, even how it works so <laughs> maybe you can figure it out and let us know uh thanks again uh, this has been another edition of the arrowhead pride editor show <laughs>